In the Canadian province of British Columbia, First Nations people dwelling on the banks of the Fraser River are finding themselves increasingly criminalized by the state for merely catching fish to feed their young ones, just like their ancestors did for thousands of years. Joshua Blakeney reports. Despite the fact that the colonial government of Canada has signed no treaty with the Aboriginal Coastal Salish people who reside on the banks of British Columbia's mighty Fraser River, the state claims jurisdiction over all the natural resources and aquatic life of the Western Canadian province. Thus, Canadian First Nations in the region have found themselves subject to criminal prosecutions for merely catching fish to feed their children in a way that their people have been doing for hundreds, if not thousands of years. I'm getting charged, going to jail. Um, I'm, I was one of the first ones to go to jail for fishing without a license, um, possessing a fish to feed my family. What makes it right for Canada to criminalize me for something that my family and my ancestors have done for thousands and thousands of years. Since time immemorial, we've had fish as a part of our diets. What makes it right to use the law, uh, the invented laws of Canada and send me off into first jail and then court uh, year after year after year. Section 35 of the Canadian Constitution purports to recognize and affirm Aboriginal title and sovereignty. Yet, when those Indigenous peoples who have never negotiated a treaty with the Canadian state seek to assert sovereignty over the natural riches in their territories, they find themselves smeared by establishment journalists as terrorists and criminalized by statesmen who brazenly act in violation of the supreme law of Canada. Because I lived here for most of my life and it's been only seven years and that's a long time, that's, a, that's my children's lifetime. My children are so upset about this and so am I that I cannot just go and get fish without being criminalized. Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans advances environmental arguments to justify imposing stringent restrictions on indigenous fishers. However, the ubiquity of wild salmon and the deftness of the indigenous fishers who catch them poses a challenge to the profits of the white-owned corporate fish farms, which leads some to suspect that the politicians are cynically employing environmental arguments simply to protect the profits of potential political donors in the fish farm lobby. What's been going on is the Department of Fisheries and Oceans feels they have the right to manage the fish, but they've lost sight of what their objective is. They actually, what they're doing is they're trying to manage the indigenous people here to um, stop them from uh, accessing the, the food source that we, we've been accustomed to all our lives. I compare it to the situation with the buffalo in the late uh, 1800s. The fact that the buffalo were still on the land gave independence to those Indian peoples. So there was a, a, a push by the U.S. government, by the railway companies, by the cavalry to end the buffalo herds because the buffalo herds gave economic independence to the indigenous peoples who for hundreds and thousands of years had derived their livelihood from the buffalo herds. And I see the same thing happening here in British Columbia on the Fraser River and other rivers where the salmon run, that there seems to be a decision to uh, kill off the indigenous uh, wild salmon because it keeps the indigenous people dependent. And uh, we see here in British Columbia uh, the usual very tough story of indigenous people being dispossessed, ending up homeless in the streets, ending up uh, uh, addicted uh, to uh, drugs and such. Uh. The disputes between these indigenous sovereigntists and the Canadian state brings into question the legitimacy and authority of the Canadian state to assert jurisdiction over territories and waters that have never been formally relinquished 
by the colonized inhabitants of the area. Joshua Blakeney, Press TV, Chiam First Nation Territory. And that's the reporter's file for now. Until we meet again, it's goodbye.